Welcome uh, everyone here to our second briefing for the August 10th meeting, 2023, next week. And before we begin the briefing today, we'd like to formally introduce the new Tourism Development Authority President, TDA, Stephanie Pace Brown. Yeah, you can come on right on up. I'll tell you a word or two about her and then she can say a word or two herself. Uh, Ms. Brown has held executive positions at Explore Asheville, um, the Alexandria Convention and Visitors Association, as in Alexandria, Virginia, and the Colonial Williamsburg, at Colonial Williamsburg, and also at Mount Vernon, George Washington's estate. And uh, I've heard from uh, our Vice Chair Wisenhunt, who serves on the TDA board um, throughout the selection process. It was uh, very, uh, very rigorous, saw a national search, and uh, we're really pleased that you're here, and we'd be happy to hear a little more, and maybe uh, uh, our vice chair might want to say a word, too. I want to give you that opportunity. Uh, well, I'd like for Stephanie to say a few words. She has now met all of the commissioners. It took a while, but you did, and thank you for being here today. We're very lucky to have Stephanie as president of tourism. She has so many new ideas, and I'm excited to serve with her and um, as she gets to know for Side County and Winston-Salem. But welcome, Stephanie. Yes, thank you so much. It, I'm just thrilled to have been selected to join the community. And I've been passionate about you know inviting visitors to experience for Scythe County for the benefit of the people who live here. And as I've been touring around the last couple of weeks and experiencing just really what my grandmother would have called an embarrassment of riches, um, you know, really all of the wonderful amenities that are offered here. So um, thank you for giving me a chance to say hello. I look forward to serving um, the residents of the county and getting to work with you um, as we progress. Thank you. Thank you. Steph. And thanks for being here today. Thank you. Good. Chair Martin, if you don't mind me saying that, uh, Stephanie, while you're here, we, we don't have Colonial Williamsburg, obviously, but we do have Old Salem. And I look forward to you helping us to make that just as exciting as Colonial Williamsburg. That is one of my favorite places to actually um, visit with really? teachers to teach about um, early American history. And I spent five years with teachers um, at Colonial Williamsburg wow. to help us to understand better early American history. So that is um, a great testament in our country to help teachers to teach better. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I, you know, really enjoyed being there and, you know, seeing kind of firsthand how important it is to, you know, enrich contemporary life by understanding the founding of the country. And I uh, was given a wonderful in-depth tour of Old Salem last week. And you know, I think the, um, being known as a place for arts and innovation is really exactly what I'm experiencing here as I learn the community, you know, rich, a rich foundation and a bright future. No. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're ready to turn the meeting over to our county manager. We'll go over our briefing items and we'll have one discussion item and a closed session. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. Um, so I'll dive into the uh, proposed agenda for the August 10th meeting. The first item is a public hearing item. It's a public hearing to consider the expenditure of county general funds for an economic development project and authorizing an agreement with a company to be named probably next Thursday, but I'll let Kyle Haney review that. Good afternoon, Commissioners, and, and yes, um, as per custom, I will go through the full presentation and talk about the project uh, next Thursday with the name of the company. But um, just an overview of the project is a company looking to locate an electric battery module manufacturing plant and office here in Forsyth County. If they did choose that, they would make $69,600,000 in building and machinery and equipment and capital investment. Um, and then 87 new full-time jobs over a seven-year period. The incentive proposal is $1,320,720 um, for that. And I'm happy to answer any questions now, but we'll give the full presentation next week. Any questions? Very briefly, um, Kyle, we, we, I asked you about this earlier. I don't know if you're at liberty to, um, to mention, to reference what kind of batteries we're talking about it's, being manufactured. It's a it's electric battery modules, and so they are um, a lithium ion uh, battery modules. Any other questions for Kyle? Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. 
Agenda item two is a resolution recognizing August 2023 as Child Support Awareness Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Uh, Jennifer Tubbs next Thursday will review that in detail. I don't think Jennifer's here and, and wouldn't expect her to be. So you know, she'll help us make that uh, uh, presentation and awareness of that. Item three is resolution acknowledging notice from the Piney Grove Volunteer Fire and Rescue Department Incorporated of its intent to purchase a fire engine and approving its purchase. Deputy Manager Damon Sanders Pratt will review. Thank you, Mr. Manager, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, so this item for your consideration is authorization um, for Piney Grove Volunteer Fire Department to move forward uh, with its intent to acquire a piece of capital equipment. Um, Section 12 of our revised fire service agreement that all the departments uh, executed requires them to inform the county and receive commissioner authorization to purchase large capital items. Uh, so this provision was added to the agreement so that departments um, could give the commissioners notice before they uh, purchase a piece of capital equipment that might result in a tax increase. So we added this provision to their agreements. So although this is not an emergency, uh, Piney Grove submitted written notice uh, seeking authorization to make a future capital purchase um, during the current year budget request. Um, so it was not presented to the commissioners at that time and is the basis of this agenda item. Um, so the department has indicated that they have budgetary capacity uh, to finance a pumper tanker not to exceed $750,000 to replace an existing one without needing a tax increase and are seeking a commissioner uh, approval to move forward with finding an appropriate piece of equipment. Um, so I'm glad to take questions that you may have. I, I'm just going to get you to just add on um, just as a reminder because the um, a lot of the fire departments benefited from um, the ARPA funded trucks and then there was also a round of state funded vehicles as well was Piney Grove. Piney Grove did not receive either. Okay. Yeah, they were sort of, by, by recollection, they were kind of in the middle right. uh, of that group. So, you know, the questions for David. Good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, David. Uh, agenda item four is a resolution authorizing an agreement with NAACP to operate a scholarship program based on financial need for Forsyth County students to attend universities in the University of North Carolina system or United States Service Academies. Gordon Watkins will review. Uh, good afternoon, <clears throat> excuse me, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, following last week's meeting, I was able to um, exchange some emails with the folks from the local NAACP, particularly Dr. Dozier, who is the head of the scholarship committee for the NAACP. And so I've put together before you um, a proposed resolution which would um, authorize the county to um, to appropriate an amount. And, and there, there are two options. Um, one is for 10000 one is for 5000 Obviously, that number can be whatever you as a board decide um, for the scholarships. Uh, there are uh, five scholarship winners, or there will be five announced, uh, I believe, Tomorrow night, um, four of them are attending schools in North Carolina, I believe, um, two at Winston-Salem State, one at Chapel Hill, and one at North Carolina Central, and another is attending um, the Naval Academy uh, Preparatory School, which is a school folks go to to prepare to enter into the Naval Academy um, in Annapolis. And so um, it... I put together the resolution and then attached to that is, is the standard agreement we have for special appropriations, uh, which is entitled Agreement for the Grant of Funds. I appreciate that the chair um, reminded me that it would be good to clarify, so I did add a sentence to that um, agreement, which states uh, the grantee must pay all county grant funds directly to the university service academy or service academy preparatory school. So it's clear the money is going directly to the schools, and that would allow the county to support uh, these these different schools, state and federal. Um, happy to answer any questions anyone has. Is, is there anyone from the NAACB here by any chance? I, I don't know that. Because my one question, I, I actually had a couple of questions. It, particularly, I was wondering how the scholarship gets advertised. I was kind of curious how people learn about it. Um, because clearly I, it, is, it would be my assumption and of interest that that anyone would be eligible to apply. And, and clearly the NAACP does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, creed, so I assume clearly a white applicant, there could have been a white applicant, for example. Um, and I, I was just curious about the advertisement and, and just sort of to be 
told that I was correct in my assumption. I, I would assume that's correct. I, I, they, they certainly can answer that next week. All right. That would be great if we could get that for next week. Yeah. That would be good. Okay. And I did, Mr. Chairman, I did communicate that there would be some questions today to Mr. Jabbar and had not. I sent him a text yesterday. Okay. Well, those are the only questions I had about it. Okay. I wanted to know that piece of information. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I have several concerns, but my main concern is that one is 5,000 and one's 10,000. Everything that I've heard so far has, only, has been 5,000. How did a 10,000 arise? Well, <clears throat> Again, the board can approve whichever they want. I, I had heard 10,000 at some point. Um, if, if the board wants to vote for 5,000 or zero or what, whatever number you want to vote for, that's certainly up to you. I think there's board right. interest in both numbers. That is correct. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I will state, just, just as an update, I believe there were some questions about Crosby Scholars that the county has funded in the past. Uh, the county has not funded any scholarships through Crosby Scholars in the past. And I do have a question. In terms of the reporting, it's, it appears that the reporting um, needed to respond back by June 30th of 2024. Could we give them six months to respond back to the We, we certainly reporting? can. We, we certainly can. No, this, that's too long for me. Okay. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be happy to change that to December 31st. They actually like. should be able to um, provide that information right after Friday. Thank you. I'll do that. Thank you. Any I would just for Gordon. Oh. Sorry. To expound upon um, Vice Chair Wisenhunt's question as it relates to the five to ten thousand, when I reviewed the letter that um, I received, and I think all of the commissioners received about participating in the gala, there was a ten thousand dollar high. That was the highest amount for sponsorship. And so I would assume that's where the 10,000, because there is a 5,000 sponsorship, there's a 2,500, there's a thousand, so forth and so on. And I think it's fair to assume, but I could be wrong, that maybe that's where that ceiling of 10,000 may have come from. Right. I, I'm, I'm looking at um, our resolution that's written here, and on the back page, it itemize um, what those sponsorships were for and knowing that our um, sponsorship for the scholarships are being earmarked for the children in terms of 2000 apiece for five children to the schools. Just for clarification. Well, I have many concerns, but I will voice my other concerns before I vote next week. Yeah. Is the uh, scholarship award based primarily on need? And if that is the case, what is defined as the need? How bad off do you have to be to be considered for the scholarship? It is based in part on need. There were multiple... Um, multiple criteria that were considered. Need was one of them. It, it was not uh, reserved for low-income recipients. And so that, again, would be a question that the NAACP could better answer than me. But um, there, there, were, there were multiple uh, criteria, which, which they can discuss further. But uh, obviously, academics were part of it and some other things. But need was a factor. Gordon, I, I would um, say that I'm hopeful that Dr. Dozier will be here um, on August 10th to continue with the Q&A. Um, but could you also describe the rubric and other additional information that she's provided to you relative to this scholarship? I can. I don't have it in front of me oh, right now. Oh, fair enough. But, okay. But, I'm, but I'll, there I'll was happy, I'll an be happy. extensive. She, she did send out that rubric, and I apologize. I don't have it in front of me. But there were, there were multiple things that were in there. Um, and, and need was one of them. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Chair Martin, I um, do have um, maybe a couple of questions right now in order to prepare for next Thursday. Um, I, can we send any questions that we have 
knowingly now to the NAACP so that when they come, then they, you know, the expectations around what we have concerns or questions about, and, and I don't mind sending mine, you know, as soon as I can get them, you know, um, in a way that is understandable, because I do have a few questions. And ideally, any of the other commissioners would um, present questions to you that we have about regarding this issue with the NAACP and they can be prepared to maybe even respond before Thursday and it would make it that much more expeditious as we go through this. The second question that I have is do, does the county have a system of giving out scholarships? No. Okay, so if we don't, are we getting ready to prepare to set up a system to provide scholarships? No. That, that wouldn't be your recommendation in no, light no, of this? No, I, I don't think the county has a general authority to provide scholarships. If that's something the board wants to pursue, that's something we could respond to. I mean, we have organizations such as Winston-Salem Foundation, which gives out 100 or more scholarships each year. and. You know, they're very well equipped to do that. So it's it's just not something the county has ever done that I know of. Um, and I don't, we don't, as I said last week, we don't really have the authority to give funds to an individual. And so that's why this is structured uh, going through, you know, state universities. Um, if that was something that the board wants to do and wants to explore, we would probably want to go into more detail about what the board would want the criteria to be. So then maybe I am confused around the language that is very specific as it relates to this re resolution, because as I read it, it said it means to me that the county is entering into an agreement with a specific organization, the NAACP, to operate a scholarship program. And so my inference is that the county is willing to set up a systematic approach so that any organization can come before us and ask to set up a scholarship program, which, by the way, I'm an educator. Everybody knows I'm gung-ho about it. But if that's not the route we're taking, then I think we need to be very intentional about how we progress with this. It's, 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 you know. If I can clarify for you, um, Commissioner Woodbury, I think that the language we could use would be sponsorship. Mm. And by way of the sponsorship, which is, again, itemized on the letter, that can conclude that that sponsorship is earmarked for scholarships for the funding that the county is providing through this special appropriation opportunity. Thank you. We don't really have the authority to do sponsorships by themselves. What, what, we, need, what we need to look at is what authority we have to proceed. And, and this was brought by the board, and so there has not been a systematic approach to this in, in terms of scholarships and everything. If that's something the board wants to explore, that's something we could look into. But there, we don't have a system for providing scholarships at this moment because we've never done it. My, if I may, <clears throat> my understanding is that it's not a matter of uh, it being a prohibited activity for the uh, board support. There are ways in which we can do it and ways in which we can't. Um, uh, it is, I think, not unusual for organizations with special appropriations requests to come forward with different kinds of services that ultimately benefit individuals. But we're not giving the money to individuals. We're giving the money to the, um, we're appropriating the money on a contract basis to the organization to operate a particular kind of service. Uh, this seems to me the way in which it has been written up by our attorney uh, and the appropriate way of considering it. The fact that we have not previously um, uh, done this with a scholarship program per se uh, doesn't mean that we cannot choose to do it um, with the proper contractual terms and the proper legal approach. Um, 
uh, I would suggest that when we have, when the board has uh, contracted uh, with uh, Crosby Scholars, for example, uh, for quite a substantial appropriation that uh, while it may not have been for scholarships per se, that is the, the core function of the organization, uh, the difference is uh, that their budget is substantially larger in order to cover uh, you know, programmatic expenses and therefore it, go, it, it has in those cases gone to the organization without specificity as to I, I would say that's that's very fair, except I don't believe that it is the core function of Crosby Scholars. I think yeah, the core I, function I can, is... I can speak to that. Yeah. I, I was on their board for 18 years. Um, and basically, their role is to... Pre, they, are to they do provide last-dollar grants. So their goal is to see that students are not only prepared for college, but to see that they're able to apply for all financial assistance and financial aid. So literally every student in that program will prepare a FAFSA, the Federal uh, Assistance Program right. application, and they will help them apply for a particular university applications and other financial aid need and whatever. And, and they will end up, with, but if you don't get anything, you're actually eligible for $1,200 a year that's renewable upon your successful completion of that freshman, sophomore, junior year. So it is not, it, in fact, most of their money, in fact, the, the money that provides a scholarship, basically an endowment that was created basically, mm -hmm. I think, from uh, the KB Reynolds Foundation uh, Trust, Charitable Trust, mm -hmm. actually created a fairly, and, and, it, and let me back up, it began with the Crosby Tournament. That's why it's called Crosby, it began with the Crosby Golf Tournament. Mm -hmm. Crosby Golf Tournament provided the proceeds that were in excess through via Sara Lee went into that fund and it accumulated three or four million. The it's, it, KBR has actually invested also in that. And it's basically a trust that has not expanded very much simply because it's the last dollar grant and the real efforts is to get as to have kids be able to get additional financial aid from others, and of course, you can be a Crosby Scholar and not get any financial aid sure. because I've, you get because you go through the preparation to apply for college mm -hmm. and and to be prepared. So, I mean, there's Saturday workshops uh, all through the year, every year, summer activities. I mean, they do college campus visits. They do all those kind of things. Now, I stand corrected in my reference to scholarships being the core purpose. I would suggest that it is a part of their core funk, their core activities, but. Um, but certainly, uh, it would be l more accurate uh, to um, uh, to to perhaps term assistance to scholars seeking to pursue higher education as the core purpose. Yep, it's accurate. Thank you. Thank Any, you for anything else that needs to be said today. Our question for Gordon. Chair Martin, I do have one question. Do we have as commissioners the authority to open up special appropriations based on, you know, scenarios that we deem appropriate to open up special appropriations to provide dollars? So um, perhaps we need a better title than special appropriation. Okay. Really, really, it's it's community community service agreements. It's it's people provide groups providing service to the community as opposed directly to the county. Mm -hmm. And so the short answer to your question is at any time. The county could enter into an agreement with an organization to provide a community service. Traditionally, this board has done that. During the budget. It doesn't have to be done during the budget, but that's just the way it's been done. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that is something that's up to the discretion of the board. Thank you. And I do just want to um, clarify with the county manager that we do have two tables at the, at the gala, correct? One table was purchased. Oh, one, one table. Now, any additional questions? Well, I do have a question. Um, the clarification in terms of the table. 
the reasoning? That was for you, Commissioner Woodbury. So I just wanted to um, make sure that the public knew that we have still invested in a the gala by way of um, the table. Participation. At the yeah, okay. exactly. And I, I'm, I mean, I don't know if it's relevant to say what the table costs, but I, I do w yeah, want I to make sure that. Yeah, I think it was tune of uh, $400 per table. Okay. I hope to see you there. I will be. Thank you. <laughs> Not at our table. I was invited to another table, but thank oh, you. Fair enough. Thank you. All. So, I think we've probably exhausted this topic for today. Right. So I'm not asking for more questions. Oh, oh I'm sorry. If, if anyone wants to forward me by email any questions you'd like me to send on to um, Dr. Dozier, I'd be happy to do so. I'll do it. All right. Thank you. And I presume we'll forward on the questions that we heard today to them, Gordon, and we can please get those knocked out. So very good. Dudley, if I can say one more thing, I know. I'll let it go after this. Um, the letter or the information that Dr. Dozier did send, I think it's in, in all fairness that all of the board members do receive that information, and that would help with many of the conversation. Thank you. Okay. Very good. We'll get that out this afternoon. So. Very good. Uh, agenda item five is approval of minutes for the meeting of July 27, 2023, and? They were sent out about an hour ago. Very good. So you'll have those in your inbox. Um, you got a couple, one budget and finance item. It's an amendment to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. It appropriates $39,000 from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Service for an agreement addendum 491 in Denise Price, our behavioral health expert services person. We'll review this. Good afternoon, commissioners. So as Dudley mentioned, this is um, a, 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 a ordinance to appropriate dollars from AA or agreement addenda 491. As you may recall, the agreement addendas are how public health receive fundings from the state. Um, every year there's a shore up of transferring funds from underspending um, counties to counties that have expended their dollars. So. Because we've done a good job of spending our dollars this year, we are set to get an additional $10,000. Additionally, this particular um, ordinance does also allocate $29,000 that were already known but not included in the FY24 budget. So it's for a total of $39,000. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Denise? Denise, I got a qu Yeah, I do have a question. Sure. Was um, the the additional dollars allocated to any special program? It is. So AA491 is associated with efforts to immediate overdoses, um, opioid overdoses specifically. Fair enough. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you, Thank Denise. You. Agenda item seven is a resolution authorizing execution of an agreement between Forsyth County and Striker Sales LLC. It provides service and maintenance of ambulance stretchers and power lifting devices. Chief Joey Hunley will review. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I feel like this is Groundhog Day um, with, uh, talking about Stryker. This is um, an agreement to, to enter into a contract, as uh, Mr. Watts uh, mentioned, um, for a uh, sole proprietor um, contract with Stryker Sales LLC is to do maintenance on our power load, power lift stretcher systems that go into the ambulances. Um, the total price of the contract, as it was mentioned, is $149,962.19. We budgeted for that in, in this budget year, or just under $50,000 per year. Uh, it'll be to cover 16 power load, power lift systems. Um, we also have historically done our um, mechanical stretchers in this, in this contract. Uh, we chose to pull those out and bid them out, and Striker was not the least expensive, so we went with another organization uh, for uh, those those uh, those stretchers. Um, the contract, you know, as I mentioned last time, with the, with Life Pack 15 contract, uh, the money that was saved on the contract is pretty substantial. So, but over 21, 21 to 22, and 22, 23 years, we saved about. $65,000, that's my rough math, because um, I didn't write the number down here, um, by having a maintenance contract as opposed to not having a maintenance contract with the repairs that we spent, would have spent money on. So I'll entertain any questions. Yet. I think it's the stretchers basically that you did actually get quotes from are not sole proprietor kind of issues. No, sir. Uh, MSAR, I think, is the, is the organization that we're going to to do maintenance on those. Okay, thank you. Sir. Other questions? 
enjoy. Thank you, Chief. Uh, agenda item H, resolution authorizing purchase and conveyance of used and surplus law enforcement motorcycles from Cabarrus County, North Carolina, pursuant to provision of North Carolina General Statute 160A-274. And Chief Deputy Rocky Joyner will review this item. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, I'm here just to answer any questions you have about the resolution authorizing the conveyance of the used motorcycles uh, that were surplus by Cabarrus County. Um, the Sheriff's Office requesting to purchase two used law enforcement motorcycles surplus by them. Uh, these motorcycles will be used for directive patrols, uh, traffic enforcement, uh, provide bike and motorcycle safety instruction. We'll conduct like funeral escorts, dignitary protection disc, uh, escorts, uh, directed neighborhood patrols, as well as being used as recruiting tool. And uh, when I was a motor officer before, they were actually very, very, um, they're accepted really well at festivals and community events and stuff like that that people just seem to love them. And so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If you don't, I'll sit down. So you're using <laughs> forfeiture dollars? Excuse me? You're using forfeiture dollars? Yes, uh, yeah, it'll be asset forfeiture dollars. Um, the price of the motorcycles is under, is like 14003 for both of them. Um, their BMW is fully equipped, lights, sirens, radar, they just put new tires and stuff on them. So I would estimate the value of them. The NADA on them were about $8,500 each without all the equipment. They're probably $12,000 bikes uh, with everything that's going to be equipped on them. Has the sheriff's office ever had motorcycles before? We have. We had we had two Harleys before that we that we leased. Um, I, I, was, I rode one of those. I also was a motor at Kernersville. Um, I was over to traffic team and we had a, a team of motorcycles we those harley davidsons are they are great for funeral escorts and parades and stuff like that they're not very versatile when it comes to actually doing enforcement work and so i was also part of the reason we didn't have the harleys anymore uh, the bmws are the way to go we've been looking at them ever since we've been here but the cost of a new one is roughly 40 grand by the time you buy it and get it outfitted um, I wasn't really that excited about spending you know, $120,000 uh, up front, and we've been looking for used ones for quite a while. Um, the used ones get scarfed up pretty quick, and so uh, Cabarrus had bought these from Mooresville when Mooresville got a new chief, and they switched from BMW to Harley-Davidson, and they liked them so much that they ordered two brand-new 2023s and so they knew that I was looking, and so they called and said, you know, if you, if you want these, uh, we'll, we'll offer them up to you at a, at a good price before we, before we try to sell them. And so that's how we got with Cabarrus County. Other questions for Rocky? Thank you guys very much. Thanks, Rocky. Got off easy today. All right. Agenda item nine is resolution awarding a contract for temporary staffing services for the Sheriff's Office Detention Records Section to express services incorporated doing businesses, express employment professionals. You can associate an uh, amendment to the budget ordinance amendment, mostly uh, adjusting the, the uh, staff count, turn over Randy Hunt, our business manager. Thanks, Dudley, and good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, the Detention Center Records Section consists of 20 detention officer positions, and right now 14 are vacant. Normally, these positions, in addition to the records duties, serve as the relief factor for detention officers and includes day and night shifts, filling in during breaks, as well as when employees are out uh, on vacation, sick leave, workers' compensation, or military leave. These positions do work security duties in the housing areas and do manage protected and sensitive information that, by law, must be done by Sheriff's Office employees. However, with the ongoing issue of elevated vacancies, mandatory, mandatory overtime is being used to keep the records section operating. And that only adds to the employee burnout concerns that we all have. So to help ease staffing pressures, the Sheriff's Office and County staff have agreed to eliminate three detention officer positions in exchange for five full-time temporary uh, agency positions as a short-term solution. Their primary duties would be data entry and administrative functions. The temporary agency employees would receive $15 per hour. And I want to stop and say that was 
uh, that's set by the county and the sheriff's office. We take a look at the county's pay plan, a similar type position, and uh, $15 was believed to be the reasonable uh, amount that everybody was happy with. Uh, and then on top of that, the temporary agencies would tack on a, a markup rate. So we contacted uh, Kelly Services, uh, they're over 40%, about 41%. Express Pros, 32.0%. And Bradley Temps, also 32%. And we've used both Bradley and Express Pros and are most happy with Express Pros. Um, and as with the permits unit and the information we've documented before for you guys before, uh, they, uh, using temp agency positions is going to be cheaper than a full-time position because uh, the fringe benefit rates are uh, over 40% uh, with the county. And if, uh, you know, for holidays, sick, vacation, you would not pay your temp employees. Or if it's a slow day and they get, go home early, they're not going to get paid for that either. So you're going to save money on the temp agency positions. So therefore, the not to exceed amount for a proposed contract with Express Pros here in Winston-Salem is $171,765 uh, $171, for 10 months of this fiscal year, and then for next fiscal year, $205,920. So if you continue for that second year, the three eliminate positions cover the cost of this contract. Finally, this agenda item contains a budget ordinance amendment to update the authorized position count for the sheriff's office, reducing it by three. Um, we're here to, here, here to answer any questions and also got some detention folks here to help me out this operating in nature. Thanks. I, I, I just comment, I think that's a, 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 a good thing to do, particularly temporary, and it could be long term for our, or at least longer. Um, and I think that's a good idea. I, I, when I read the agenda attachment for this, I did not see what you just talked about, which were the prices for the, uh, the different temp agencies. Can you, can you just, did, was one of them in the 20 something, did you say 27% for one of those? Uh, Bradley, uh, Bradley was 32%, same as Express Pros. Uh, from Kelly Services, they're a lot more expensive. They've quoted 40, 41%. Okay, so no so one was 20. I just nah. misheard. So so basically among the two that was 32, you've worked with, I know you've had some temporary agency, uh, agency employees, uh, particularly back in the gun permit part, and we've had some discussion about that. So so I'm assuming that they came from Express Pro. Right, and, and the uh, markup right there is 31%, so it has gone up a little bit. I got, I got no. Well, I, I I do understand that and think that's a, and I and I you're, you're exactly right. The the benefit and overhead piece of that is covering the thirty one percent. I mean, I understand that for the other officers. I guess a good suggestion. Any other questions? Yes, Chairman. Uh, so that I can be clear, Express Services and Bradley was at the same rate at thirty two percent. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, uh, that's the uh, what they quoted to us informally. Sort of informal bit of the, we provided them the specification what we're looking for, and they just emailed us what they would charge for markup rate. So um, I see that Express is local, right? Uh, they're all in Winston Salem. Yeah. Okay. And what was the choice? Why? Why did you choose Express over Bradley? Right. Uh, we have used both Bradley and Express uh, in the permits unit, and just had a lot better experience with Express Pros, okay. particularly with hiring uh, process and, and keeping employees. We've had a much better experience with Express Pros. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Other questions for Randy? Thank, thank, thank you. you, guys. Thanks, Randy. Agenda item, make sure I'm not going to jump ahead here. Agenda item 10 is a resolution awarding a contract for the purchase of shelving for the new courthouse project. James Anderson with General Services will review this item. <clears throat> Building's looking done. Getting there. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. The item before you is a resolution awarding a contract to Patterson Pope for the purchase and installation of new shelving systems for the clerk of court in the new courthouse. Stan Tech, our move manager, was tasked with validating file storage needs for the various departments within the courthouse. And uh, throughout design, it was anticipated that the clerk's office would migrate towards digital filing, uh, thereby reducing their need for physical storage. However, due to the current retention requirements and processes that they operate under, it's not been possible to transition to a full digital uh, filing and shelving system. And so additional files storage is going to be needed for their civil, criminal, and their estates records. 
And so while the state is continuing to move towards a digital filing system, uh, it's my understanding there are still several more years before there'll be a significant decrease in the physical storage needs for the clerk. And so uh, Patterson Pope has provided a not to exceed quote in the amount of $255,365 using Sourcewell, a competitively bid purchasing contract. Uh, the shelving does have about a six week lead time. And so due to this time constraint, it's our recommendation to proceed with the Sourcewell contract pricing in lieu of competitively bidding the shelving. And uh, so this will allow for the installation of the shelving to occur just in time for the move in into the new courthouse. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. I understand since it is going to hopefully end in, in seven years, is there any reason that the existing storage and shelving can't just be moved from the old courthouse over? So we had looked at that, and unfortunately, due to the age of the systems, parts and pieces are no longer available for it. And there's a difference between the existing floor to ceiling heights uh, where the shelving's at, and it's not possible to shorten uh, the shelving to fit in and be within fire code in the new facility. But it's within fire code in the old building. This was yep. one check. Yeah, we'll be too close to the sprinklers in the new one. It might be surplus. We might be able to look at surplus and some stuff uh, out of that building when we get out of it. So, what's the ex estimated move-in time? So we're starting move-in roughly the second week of October through the third week of October, going live that third week of this year. Yes, sir. So we're that close. We're that close. Any other questions for James? I do. James, you already have uh, money in the budget for this, don't you? We do. There's roughly $2.9 million remaining in the FF&E budget for the project. Uh, we did have really good bids come in for the remainder of the furniture, so we have a pretty good surplus to work with there. Good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, James. Meeting. Thank you. Thank you, James. Agenda item 11 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of new tires from Parrish Tire Company under the terms of the North Carolina Sheriff's Association Tire Contract. Kirby Robinson. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Board. Uh, General Services, of course, is background is responsible for maintaining the county's motor fleet. Uh, that fleet is roughly 700 vehicles in size and contains both non-emergency as well as emergency vehicles. As you can imagine, uh, with a fleet that size running roughly 6 million miles a year, we burn through quite a few tires. Um, and I enjoy talking about tires. So this is good. Uh, you may recall that in fiscal 23, the board approved two contracts for the purchase of tires. Both of those contracts were under the terms and conditions of North Carolina state contract. Um, in all honesty, we've had a difficult time with that contract over the past year. You know, the state originally executed it in 2015. It has essentially extended it since that time. And when, you know, the result of that is you know, that it's really old and a lot of the tires on it are either discontinued, they haven't added new tires with it, so it's resulted in service issues operating under the terms and conditions of that contract. Um, this year, our request is to open one contract with Parrish Tire Company, which is a local company, for tire purchases up to $260,000 annually for a period of three years expiring in 2026. Um, those purchases are requested under the, under the terms and conditions of the North Carolina Sheriff's Association tire contract, which in from a pricing perspective for our preferred tires is very comparable to state contract. Um, so we don't expect much of a financial impact there. Uh, we'd like to switch that contract since it is more current and it allows for the purchase of multiple tire brands from one dealer. So in the past, we would have to buy Firestone from one dealer and under state contract this dealer was uh, for Goodyear or Continental or whatnot. So that's why there's a little bit of a split in the past under state contract. Under the Sheriff's Association agreement, again, the pricing's comparable, and we can buy all those brands from Parish Tire, which is, we, we feel like is a good thing and a very efficient thing. Um, this contract, uh, the Sheriff's Association contract, is set to expire this November, but it does have renewal options in it. So the agenda item lets us, so long as the uh, Sheriff's Association ex extends that contract, uh, we would continue under the under this resolution with the $260,000 each year, which matches our budget amount. Happy to answer any questions the board has. Only one, and yes, that sir. is the, is this, are you, did I understand you to say that the state price contract for tires has not been rebid or, or looked at since 2015? Did I hear you say that? It was originally executed in 2015. It actually expired July 31st of this year, and there is no new contract available at this time. 
Um, so they've, they've basically continued to extend it since that time. Why, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but yes, sir, it's, it has been a little bit of a mystery uh, to us as well. When, when you say comparable, because we're buying, as you suggest, a lot of tires. Yes, sir. So the question is, by comparable, are we? What, I'm assuming that Parish is slightly more expensive than the state price contract. Not all. I mean, we, we buy lots of different types of tires. There's some so things we'll, Parish is cheaper than the state price contract. That's right. So what we do is we, we zero in on our frequently purchased tires, like our pursuit tires. And so we look at you know Firehawk tire under state contract is this price, and it's this price under Sheriff Association. And at times are actually less. Uh, so it, it just depends. So again, I think the financial impact will be negligible. Okay. Any other questions for Kirby? Kirby, do you want to mention um, the construction that they might see over at um, uh, the maintenance facility, the fleet maintenance? Oh, sure. Um, and you know, James Anderson's our wonderful design and construction manager, and has got our fleet expansion project underway. Um, I drove over there the other day and about ran into a bunch of torn up asphalt uh, because they've broken ground and are waiting for some folks to get on site. I think he expects that project to be delivered early next spring, uh, which will be right on time for our school system deadline in May. Uh, so you'll, you'll start to see some uh, really exciting co-location activities happen. Great, thanks. Thank you. All right. All right. Very good. Uh, items 12 and 13 are both resolutions approving refunds by the tax assessor and collector. And you see the amounts there. Obviously, 13 is off the motor vehicle tax system. Um, the only other thing, that, that's the agenda. The only other thing I had was a reminder of um, uh, the event tomorrow at 10 o'clock at the airport. Um, and we hope to have a big crowd there. There's a 50% chance of rain, but we are going to be in one of those new hangars. And so you will be able to be very dry. And, um, and I think we'll have a great ceremony both um, uh, dedicate or cut the ribbon on the two hangar project and then um, really kind of kicking off the terminal renovation project. So it should be great. And we should have many of the legislators there. So good. Um, my co comments for good the order. Do you want to say something about stepping up? I do, of course. <laughs> uh, we had a great um, graduation this morning for stepping up. It was, uh, we saw joy and pride in, in the graduates and in, in their accomplishments. Uh, we had alumni there. We had friends there who support these folks. It's a year-long program. It's not easy. Um, it's difficult, but they have so much support from our Stepping Up staff, and I'm so grateful uh, to the folks who work in that program. It is a delight to see these people um, accomplish uh, getting away from their addictions and being able to get back with their families. They have gotten jobs, and um, they are grateful people. And it, it was good, and thank you, Dudley. Dudley came for the first time. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Martin. And it was nice for the folks who were there today, and I appreciate stepping up and their staff for what they do for these folks. I just add, I haven't been, I, I went to the first two or three graduations, and. And I must say, uh, uh, it worked out perfectly today, and I was there. And um, it, it is it re the program really has grown. I think the alumni aspect and the kind of peer support that's happened afterwards. I mean, one of the um, one of the graduates from I think eight years ago actually spoke today, and that was pretty uh, that was pretty powerful. And not and there were some tears and all the way around. It was a there was a, it was a very emotional ceremony, and um, I, I was really pleased to see how that is. Progress. So thank, thank you, thank you thank for bringing it, bringing the idea to us from uh, the National Association, and so it was great. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the good of the order before you make the you make a get the we need a motion for closed session to you read that. Yeah, but we got one other thing to do. Oh, do we? Oh, yes, we do. Yes, <laughs> yes. What, you and what, we'd like we'd like to, Matt. We'd like to invite you to come forward, please, to the podium. I'm I sorry, I have right. I next, didn't right tell him this was going to happen, but um, but is anyway. this a surprise for him? Yeah, I think it is. Well, yeah, yeah, both uh, both Dudley and I are going to come down. Matt has served as a um, an intern from uh, uh, Appalachian State University this summer, which has been great. And our county manager made this beautiful frame and got the certificate designed. It was great. And uh, I'm going to come down and and I'm going to let the turn up. County manager can talk while I'm walking. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um. So. You know, it's it, part of what um, 
I think we take seriously is, is sort of this responsibility to make sure that folks who are interested in local government service um, uh, have a chance to experience something, and particularly when it's aligned with um, some requirements that the university that they're attending um, has uh, uh, you know has in front of them. So I got a chance to talk to Dr. Brian Bulla last night um, via Zoom call, that's the professor that's sort of handling uh, the internship part of this. Uh, uh, and so, you know, I got to talk with him about the kind of experience that we've been able to give uh, Matt um, this year and, and how rich it was and how much time, frankly, he was able to spend with, with you as commissioners, um, the amount of time that he was able to spend um, with, with me and my staff, um, and, and really hopes that what we'll do is, um, is uh, kind of continue his enthusiasm for public service. Uh, he comes from a public service background. His father was a firefighter at the city of Winston-Salem. His brother's a firefighter with the village of Clemens right now. Um, and so he, he comes from this long line of, of public servants. And what I hope happened is I hope that, um, that uh, he'll, he'll enroll and get his master's. And um, you know, not too many years from now, he'll be standing in front of you as your county manager or a city manager somewhere in the state of North Carolina. If not, I know he's going to be successful at whatever he wants to do in his life. But, but, but we appreciate, um, appreciate you and, thank and you. Matt. Thank, thank you. you for you've been a huge help to us here. Um, you've been a joy to, 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 to bounce ideas off of and get your perspective as a young person, because frankly, you're the future. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll, come around. I'll, yes. just, I'll read this. It says Certificate of Appreciation proudly, and it is proudly presented to Matthew Pennington in recognition of outstanding contributions and dedication in completing 2023 summer internship at Forsyth County Government, awesome. replete with principles. I mean, pictures, got pictures, that's, hard hats, yes, the definitely. works kind of thing. It was really nice. And a beautiful, another beautiful frame made by. Uh, our county manager, so Matthew, thank you. Thank you. Now, thank you you, so you're much. welcome to make a few comments. Hello. You've had time to say. Thank you. Do a picture first. Oh, we'll yeah, we'll do a picture. You hold it. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just hold on to this right now. Um, first of all, thank you, commissioners, just for welcoming me here this summer and allowing me to observe all the daily operations. Um, thank you, county manager Watts. For all the same thing and everybody that I've worked under this summer. It's been an honor. Thank you, Matt. To you. Thank you. We're gonna miss you. Ready for me? Closed session. All right, yep. Need to ask the board to consider a motion to go into closed session to discuss a matter relating to the location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body, including agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that may be offered by the public body in negotiations pursuant to Provisional General Statute 143, 318, 11A4. Since there's no other business to come, to, to come before the board at this meeting, finally, the closed session of the meeting will be adjourned. Make that motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. And we'll be in large conference.